Raka, Jandara Kabavara, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Kurusundara Kabavara Sandara Ka. The Word of God says, For all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Kurusundara Kabavara Sa, even World War Three when it happens, somehow it's going to, if you love God, and you're called according to his purpose, and you have a sober understanding that you're going to have to stand firm in your faith, and you anticipate that because you want to, in the face of hardships and trials, in your heart, you want to be victorious over the beast and his image. In your heart, from your heart, you want to stand firm in your faith. Like you, you have this like spiritual ambition to actually be a martyr for God. And look at all these stupid pre-tribulation people trying to steal that from you. Oh no, the rapture's going to happen before we all su before any suffering or hardship. What they're saying is they're trying to they're trying to steal your inheritance in heaven. So not not only and then they talk about how oh God is going to have mercy on us so he would never have us but then they throw the whole earth under the bus saying that the 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 tribulation period where God is pouring out his wrath for a full 7 years. And then they read Matthew 24 and say, oh, that's not for us, that's for the Jews. So now they're throwing the Jews under the bus too. And then you tell, well, what about people who get saved after the rapture? Oh, those are the tribulation saints. They're the ones who have to suffer. So they also throw the tribulation saints under the bus as well. <laughs> Pre-tribulation believers are wicked, dude. They're the weeds among the wheat. And they're the very ones that are going to hate and betray you just like Judas Iscariot. In the very end, when their true colors are finally really seen, they're going to be mad at God because they can't live in their expensive home anymore. They're going to be mad at God because World War III happened, and then the market. And I told God that I wanted the rapture to happen already. And I and I, what about all those rapture confirmations, God? That's what people are going to say. I'm just saying. Meanwhile, World War III. That's their deciding moment when the government and regime of the Antichrist, the beast, wins World War III. And people look at the world right now in, Uni in the United States and think, I don't think the devil could ever take over the USA. <laughs> You're about to find out. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, I'm sorry, fortunately for us who serve God, we are going to be able to uh, go through the hardships and the trials like an apostle. I'm just saying, you're going to be able to actually be a martyr in the end of the age and might actually be written of in the Bible where it says in, in Revelation chapter 7 that they, I think it says they were given palm branches and they were up in heaven saying glory to God. And then John talks to one of the elders and the elders, one of the 24 elders says, yeah, these are them who came out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and they've been made clean. And it's hardships and trials and standing firm in your faith, proving that your faith is genuine, is what causes you to be refined and made pure, perfect. And that's why Daniel says in, in Daniel chapter 12, I think it's in like verse 1, <clears throat> or I think it's Daniel 12, 10 or something. Uh, but just read the whole chapter. I looked that scripture up and it wasn't in chapter 12, verse 1. Just read the whole chapter. <laughs> anyway, World War III is going to happen. And in the book of Daniel, it says, and it's talking about the time of the end, it says that many will be, I think it says, be refined and made perfect. That's talking about the trials and the hardships. When you haven't eaten for four days or five days or a week, and you're starving and you can barely move, and some mean soldier just came out and gave you a beating for no reason. And you found out that, you know, a bunch of people just took the mark of the beast. I'm just saying, and they left. And you can see them walking out, and they got pizza in their hands, and they're eating. I'm just saying, they have a bit, you look out, the, and you can see across the fence over there, and a guy who was just standing firm in his faith for the first three weeks, <laughs> finally said, I thought the rest was going to happen. And now you see him over there in the parking lot. Go and and he's got a big old box of chicken in it with him, and he's standing there eating a big old 
wing or something or stuffing his face with pizza and they're going to take him and he gets to go home. He's got a free ticket home. He took the Mark of the Beast. They gave him 500 credits so he can get home. That's enough for a bus ride, a good meal, a hotel room for the night, you know, and make your way home to see what happened to Mama. I'm just saying. Then you get back home and you find the house is gone or all the windows were blown out and the carpet is soaking wet and there's Animals have been in there, and it's been looted, and there's graffiti on the walls. I'm just saying. And then you suddenly start starving again. And you realize you took the mark of the beast. Don't let that happen to you. Stand firm in your faith. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's what you want to happen. You want to be calling out to God. Help me, Lord. Help me. And standing firm in your faith. And the Bible says... That there's, these are them who came out of the great tribulation. And in another verse, I think it's chapter 15, it says, um, Revelation chapter 15, it says, these are them who were victorious over the mark of the beast and his, and his image or, or the mark and the number of his name or something. It says something. I don't know the exact words, but you want to be part of that crowd. And this is your opportunity, but. Unfortunately, if the pre-tribulation rapture people are right, then you get raptured up. You don't get any of that martyr's crown. You don't get any of that uh, eternal inheritance in heaven for standing firm in your faith. You're not going to get any of that. So if the pre-tribulation rapture people are right, they're a bunch of lying t freaking guys who are stealing your inheritance in heaven. I'm just saying. So get your heart right with God. Remember, there's everybody gets tempted. Okay, but there's people who are called what the Bible says evil doers. Those are the people who actually do evil that are wicked. Okay, when you see somebody with like gang tattoos or skull and crossbone tattoos, those are dangerous people. If you see somebody who has a tattoo of a skull or a dragon or a, you know, some sort of crazy skull and crossbones with death, you know, you need to be careful of those people. Okay, now some people get saved, but they're going to be, it's going to be on their heart to change something about that weird skull and crossbones you have on you. I'm just saying. Oh boy, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, World War Three. I for, did I mention that probably I get paid on the 11th and I think God is just waiting for me to get paid Get enough money to buy a little bit more supplies. And it's going to happen on the 12th or the 13th. And that's my thinking from now on. If it doesn't happen, then maybe we got until the 20th. Maybe we got until... Oh, no, we don't We don't even got until the 20th. I'm just saying. And today is October 9th. Look at the news, man. I'm just saying. What's that mean that we just bowed out of the, uh, the Iranian nuclear deal? Means that we're free to... to tell them, no, you, we will not allow you to have nukes, and we will bomb all of your nuclear facilities now. I mean, that's what the okay is on that. Just so you know, the significance of that nuclear deal, and what Donald Trump just did by canceling it out, is literally a World War III declaration again. Like, I mean, we first saw Antifa declared war like I think it was November 4th. China kind of declared war on 320. Russia, I mean, when did the when did Russia declare war? Probably back in 2017. I'm just saying. And then we got an economic war. We got a deep state that we're fighting against that might be sabotaging US aircraft. I mean, what's going on? Guess what? It's the end of the age and Jesus is coming soon and you're going to be able to be a martyr and you need to be praying about that. Praise God. Aren't you blessed? And the two witnesses are somewhere in the world right now. <laughs> that was the significance of the 29th for me. I had agreed with God, with Jesus himself. We were standing there looking face to face, eye to eye. And I said, okay. If I'm one of the two witnesses, let something major... I said let World War III really happen on, on the 29th. And it didn't actually happen, but that day I, when I checked the news, Marfugel was saying that it was a tactical nuke that went off. And I was like... Ugh! I'm not saying I'm one of the two witnesses or anything, but we'll find out, I guess, eventually. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> Trust me, it's not a job you want. Everybody wants to kill you. Everybody in the whole earth wants to murder the two witnesses. And they all celebrate like it's Christmas when they're finally put to death. <laughs> and the Bible says the only reason they're still alive is because anybody who tries to harm them, fire comes out of them somehow, and God just attacks their enemies like Elijah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so it might, I mean, it's going to be a hard time for those two guys. I hope they make it. <laughs> and there's 144,000 out there, and there's the... You know, fulfillment of the Antichrist is there and everything. All these prophecies, fulfillment. Oh, whoa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Time's running out. Get your heart right with God. You're going to see miracles and signs and wonders after World War III. Because when World War III actually happens, the angel Michael is released and he is the protector of God's people. And he's the same angel that was involved in any time that God's people needed protection. And part of that was the exodus from Egypt. Part of that was in your life when the devil tried to attack you and tried to get you to commit suicide or kill yourself or do something. The angel Michael had had his angel, your, oh, your guardian angel was dispatched and reports to Michael. Michael reports to the Lord God Jesus himself and comes out of the glory and and kind of like carrying a scroll with seals hands them out here's where you here's your assignment here's your assignment here's your assignment i'm just saying hallelujah and and the daniel says that michael will will arise and um so we're going to see miracles and signs and wonders and the power of god there's going to be healing there's going to be healings there's going to be multiplication of food and god's going to bless he's going to bless and it's going to be around certain people who have lived right Okay, who's actually God's going to witness to people. People are actually going to get saved too. There's going to be, people are going to fall away and people are going to get saved. The people you thought were going to fall away are the ones who end up being saved. And the ones who you thought, oh, this one, he's he knows the Bible front and back. <laughs> Those are the ones who use Bible knowledge as a cover up for their lack of intimacy with God. I'm just saying. So, I mean, it's hard to know. God's God's working. God's working all things for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means when you see the nukes overhead and you start saying, "Help me, Jesus," you don't go, "Gosh, no, you God, I thought the rods were lowering for me. I'm not it. Well, I better, I better, it better happen in the next two days because World War Three just happened, and I thought when the bombs come down, we go up." You know, get mad at God. Instead, you need to be like, oh, Lord Jesus, help, help, help. <laughs> and the joy of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. Ha <laughs> ha. Glory. <laughs>